method of substitution with indefinite integrals. Our objective is to find indefinite, indefinite integrals using the substitution method. Now, why do we need the substitution method? Well, sometimes we have to take the indefinite integral of composite functions. So the substitution method is for composite functions. Think of the chain rule. Remember doing the chain rule, the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x. This is a composite function where we have a function inside another function. Then what we do is take the derivative of the outside first, leave the inside function inside, and then multiply by the derivative of that inside function. That was the chain rule. Well, now that we're working backwards, if we have a composite function in our indefinite integral, we need to see that derivative of the inside function multiplied to that composite function. The substitution method says that we call this inside function u, we substitute to make it look simpler. So instead of f prime of g of x, it's f prime of u, and then all of the other stuff should be the derivative or du, the derivative of that inside stuff. Then we have a simpler written indefinite integral. We can do that indefinite integral very easily, and then we substitute back what the u equals. Think about when we take the derivative of a composite function, like the sine of 2x. Of course, 2x is a function inside the sine function. So what do we do? First, take the derivative of the outside function, cosine 2x, while the inside stays the same, and then multiply by the derivative. That's what we were showing here. So when I'm doing the opposite process, where I'm taking the integral of cosine 2x, I need to have next to it the derivative of what's inside so that I can properly take that antiderivative. That's what I'm looking for when I take integrals of composite functions. Let's take a look at some examples. Find each indefinite integral. So just like when we think of the chain using the chain rule, it's because we have a function inside another function, and the inside part we usually identify as, well, for fun, we talked about it as the chocolate in, in an M&M, something where there's more going on outside. So when I look at this expression for the indefinite integral, the inside part, or the u that I'm going to call it, is going to be this that is inside the power to the fifth function. So I'm going to call that part the u, which hopefully means the rest of what I have is its derivative. Off to the side, I always like to write down what I've expressed as the u. u equals x squared minus 9. Now I'm going to find its derivative, du dx. The derivative of this is 2x. And I always am going to multiply both sides by dx. So really, I'm going to have du equals 2x dx. Normally, I'm going to skip this step of writing du over dx and then the derivative, and just du equals 2x dx. Thankfully, I do have that derivative there. That is du. So I'm taking out this part, replacing it with u, and I'm taking out this part and replacing it with du. Notice what's left is the power 5. So I'm going to rewrite this integral as the integral of u to the fifth du. Notice how much simpler that indefinite integral looks. Now I can easily take its antiderivative. Using my power rule, add 1 to the exponent, multiply by the reciprocal, and add the constant of integration every time, plus c. Now because my problem was given in terms of x, my answer must be given in terms of x. So while I have what u equals up here, I do need to plug it back in. So ultimately, 1 sixth, u is x squared minus 9, so x squared minus 9 to the 6th plus c. And that's how we use the method of substitution. Let's look at this integral. The integral of sine of 3x plus 2 dx. Now I notice this is a composite function. All of this part right here is inside the sine function. So I need to use my method of substitution, or the backwards chain rule, we could think of it. 
So that part is going to be the u, the inside function. Off to the side, I write down what u equals, 3x plus 2. Then I write down what du equals. The derivative of 3x plus 2 is 3 times the differential dx. Remember, I could write it as du over dx and then multiply by dx, but I'm going to skip straight to this step because it's quicker. Now, I notice that I have dx, but I don't have a 3 there. So I do need to have that 3 in order to properly substitute. So I'm going to multiply the dx by 3, but that's not allowed just to multiply by 3. I can, however, multiply by 1, which means multiplying by 3 and multiplying by 1 third. Using my constant multiple rule, I can take that 1 third outside of the integral, and I'll rewrite it as 1 third times the integral, and then I have this part right here that represented my du. So now I can make the other proper substitutions, sine of u instead of 3x plus 2, that part came out, and instead of dx times 3, that part is du. The 1 third, of course, I already brought out to here. Now this is a much simpler integral, and I can do the antiderivative. One-third is my constant multiple. The antiderivative of sine of u is negative cosine of u. I can think about it backwards and say, what's the derivative of cosine? And that would be negative sine of u. So there's no negative here. I need the negative here. Of course, plus c, my constant of integration. And then because I'm Given a problem in terms of x, I give the answer in terms of x. So 1 third, I should bring that negative outside so I don't need so many parentheses, negative 1 third, cosine of 3x plus 2 plus c. And there we have it. Let's do the integral of x times the square root of x squared plus 1 dx. Now I notice I have a square root function that has a quadratic function inside. So I have a composite function here. This is going to probably be my u. And I say probably because sometimes we have to try and see what happens. So off to the side, I'm going to write that u is x squared plus 1 and immediately write down what is du. It's derivative 2x times dx. Now I do have the x and the dx those parts that I need, but I don't have that constant 2. So I need to multiply by 2. I'll squeeze it here, but I also need to multiply by 1 half because I can multiply by 1 and 2 over 2 is 1. So now I have the 2, the x, and the dx. That part is all my du. That 1 half is going to stay on the outside of the integral. And let's just make sure we substitute properly. So the 2, the x, and the dx all represent the du. And the x squared plus 1 comes out as the u, so square root of u. Now before I take that antiderivative, of course it helps to rewrite that in exponent form. So let's do that. 1 half integral of u to the 1 half du. I can do the antiderivative by adding 1 to the exponent. So 1 half, I don't want to forget about that u to the 3 halves, and then multiply by the reciprocal of that exponent, 2 thirds, plus the constant of integration. I can simplify and plug back what I have for u. So that's going to look like 1 third, and u is x squared plus 1, to the 3 halves plus c. Let's do the integral of e to the square root of x divided by square root of x. Now sometimes it's not as obvious because we don't have parentheses to show us where we have the inside function. But when it's an exponential function, often if the exponent is more than just x, that's what's going to be our inside function. And if you remember using chain rule, that's also the way we thought about it for chain rule. So let's try that off to the side, let's say u equals square root of x, although really it might be better to write it as x to the 1 half. Then when we do du, we can use our power rule. The derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half times dx. 
but of course it's better if we don't have negative exponents. So let's rewrite what du is. 1 over 2x to the positive 1 half dx. And remember that x to the 1 half means square root of x. So if we think of this as 1 over 2 square root of x dx, we see that we actually do have part of that derivative in here, a square root of x in the denominator, like we have the square root of x in the denominator. Of course, the dx will always be there. The only thing we're missing is the 1 half. So let's multiply by 1 half and balance it by multiplying by 2. So we're really only multiplying by 1. This, of course, is needed in my du, so the only thing left over is going to be the 2. We have 2 on the outside. This part and this part is all of my du. So integral e was not substituted out, just the exponent was. And then all of the rest is du. And probably I shouldn't write the du down here so it looks like it's in the denominator because it's not. It's all of this that comes out and represents du. This is a much simpler integral, so now we do its antiderivative. Antiderivative of e to the u is simply e to the u plus the constant of integration. Then I can substitute what u equals square root of x plus c. Remember that you can always take the derivative of your answer and see if you get what you started with in the integrand.